Okay, hello students. I want to just run through the key points that you need to know before you work on your assignment. So first of all, you need to be able to analyze activity tables to create network diagrams. Uh, you'll either need to work that backward or forward. So you could uh, create network diagrams from activity tables or activity, uh, activity tables from network diagrams. We want you to be able to forward scan for the earliest start times and earliest completion times and work out a critical path. We also then want you to be able to backward scan for the latest completion and latest start times. And then also that will help you determine the float times. So first of all, I'm just going to use a few examples out of chapter 9A and chapter 9B of your textbook. So we've got, for example, here an activity table and uh, it's there to uh, create a, an activity diagram. And uh, we want to be able to uh, create an activity table, oh, sorry, a, a network diagram from this. So if I'm going to look here, I can see I've got activity A, B, C, D, E, F, G and H. And I want to use those letters and I want to use these times, first of all, to create a diagram. Now I'm going to need guidance about the predecessor. Now your predecessor is someone who's come before you. So that's your parents, for example. So first of all, let's just start to draw our activity diagram. So our first activity is going to be activity A and it goes for two minutes. Now, I've straight away made those circles too small because I'm going to have to fit in some lot of numbers in both of those halves of um, both circles and uh, in both halves of those circles. Now, I can see that activity B comes after activity A. It also tells me that A is the predecessor of B. So let's draw in B and big circle and activity B and it's going to go for 20 minutes. And now activity C has a predecessor of B. So activity C must come after uh, the activity B. So and C goes for four minutes. And I know that E's got to come in front of that. So we'll have a look at that soon. So I've just got to remember E for the moment. And keeping that in my head. So next one down the line is activity D. Now D comes after A. So I'm going to write a D there with the line and I'll write the name and I'll give it a line and a name. Yep, so that's activity D. Now here comes activity E. It's got to come after D but you also notice that uh, C's got to be done as well. So if we have a look here, we've got to install the hard drive and that's got to come after installing the CD. So that tells me that E's got to come before C and D's got to come before E. So we would write our activity diagram right here and it goes for three minutes. I made a mistake with D just looking at that, so let's fix that up as well. Okay, now let's look at activity F. E's got to be done before F. So let's do an F here. So F is going to take five minutes, and I think we can just loop it like that. Looks good. Now we've got to install the operating system, so that's got to come after. Uh, G comes after C and F. So there's G. And then we're going to do, that's going to take 10 minutes. And then we're going to do activity H, which is 12 minutes. So there we have an activity diagram from the uh, a network diagram, sorry, from the activity table. The next thing we want to do is forward scan. And that's for the early completion times or early start times. So if I'm thinking about the early start times and early completion times, if I have an activity like X and Y, so I've got two activities. We want to fill in the left hand side of the circle. So this part of the circle. Now that's going to be the earliest 
completion time for X or the earliest start time for Y. So you can see that on the left hand side of the circle, I've just called them the early times. Now it's uh, you're reading from left to right, so it's the earliest completion time for the activity which comes immediately beforehand, or the one the start time for the one that comes after. That makes sense, I hope. So now let's complete our diagram. So we just want to first of all forward scan. We start off at zero, and then zero plus two is two. Now we're going to work one node out, then two node, then three, etc. So two and five make seven. And here we have two and 20 making 22. I'm just going to put a little 22 up there. And I've got seven and three up here, and that's making 10. Now, do I put in the number which the 10 or the 22? Now, let's think about the reasoning behind this. The diagram that we have shows us the earliest completion time for activity A, B, D, and E. So if I were to put in a 10, I would not have finished activity B. So that's a concern. So what we need to do is put in the bigger number to show that we have time to complete activity A, B, D, and E. So remember to put in the bigger number that comes into the side. So we're putting in that one there. Now, Think about this one. Are we putting in the... Oh, I accidentally tapped the side of the screen. I hope that comes out all right, folks. So we we're asking the question, do we want to put in the bigger number? Do we want to put in 26 or do we want to put in 27 here? So remember, 22 and 5 is 27. 22 and 4 is 26. We want the number which enables all the activities to be completed. So if I put in 26, it means I could not finish activity F. So we're going to have to put in the bigger number, which is 27. Now, it's fairly straightforward from here. 27 and 10 make uh, 37. And then 37 and 12 make 49. So that's our forward scanning. And that's important to help determine the critical path. So to determine the critical path, you need to consider what activities, if delayed, delay the whole project. I'm going to use a highlighter first of all, just to uh, highlight that. So if I delay activity H, I delay the whole project. Same with G. And if it's just the single path by itself, that's fairly straightforward to work out. Now let's have a look. If I delay C, do I delay the whole project? Now I can delay it for a minute. So that means I've got a float time of a minute for C. But if I delay F, I delay the whole project. So F is a critical activity and it lies on the critical part. Now if I delay D and E, it does not delay the whole uh, project. So if I delay B, it does. So we can now work out the critical path. So the critical path is activity A, then B, then F, then G, and then H. And the earliest completion time for this project is 49, and the time is in minutes. Okay, so let's now uh, backwards scan. Uh, so I'd better just finish off this diagram from the last slide. So 22 and 5, like 27, 27, or well that makes 37, and that makes it 49. So on the left-hand side of the circle are our early times. So the earliest start time for A is 0. So, but uh, the earliest start time for B equals two but it's also the earliest completion time for a but this is the earliest start time for b so just remember that on the right hand side of the circles we want to consider now the late times so that's let's find a better color so these are our late times 
So we've got the latest start time for A, for example. And that could be the latest completion time for A or the latest start time for B on that one there. So let's work backwards now. So we backwards scan. So we put the same number in, that was 49, so we go 49 there. Now 49 take 12 is 37. Um, 37 take 10 is 27. Now 27 take 5 is 22. Now 22 take 3 is 19. So this is interesting here. It means we've got a float time of 19 take 7, which is 12 minutes. Uh, and then back here, 22 take uh, 20 is 2, and 2 take 2 is 0. So just remember with the critical path as well, so if it lies on the critical path, here, 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 both numbers will be the same. But if it's not on the critical path, you're going to get some float time. That's time that you can delay the whole project, uh, delay that activity, sorry, without delaying the whole project. So we've got a larger example here, and let's work through the, uh, we're going to forward scan first of all, to work out the critical path and the early completion time. So let's do that. We start off with zero. So we've got, uh, let's find a better color, zero. Now zero and four make four. Now four and five make nine, but uh, this is also two out, so I'm gonna to have to look at that one in a minute. And now zero and 10 make 10. Now 10 and three make 13. Remember the choice we make is the bigger number because we want all the activities to be completed uh, before we move on. So we're going to put in 13 there. Down here we've got a 15, 15 and 3 make 18, now 10 and 9 make 19, so we're going to put in 19 there. Let's move on, 19 and 5 make 24, 13 and 9 make 22, so we're going to put in a 24 there. Let's go down here, 19 and 7 make uh, 26. Uh, 19 and 5 make 24. Uh, let's work over here. 24 plus 10. Now that makes it 34. 26 and 6 make 32. Now 26 and 4, that makes 30. 30 and 5 make 35. So we can now determine the earliest completion time for the project, and that's 35 minutes so earliest completion time equals 35 might be minutes might be hours might be days might be dollars might be kilometers of road so let's now look at the critical path so the critical path of those activities if you delay delay the whole project so we'll go there we'll go there we'll go there we'll go here and we'll go here so those, that's our critical path. So now we can put in our critical path. Critical path equals C to F to J to M to Q. And that's our critical path. Now we want a backward scan and we can think about float times while we do that as well. So when we backward scan, any activity on the critical path, uh, both the early and the late times will be the same. So 35 take 5 is going to be 30. 30 take 4 is going to be 26. 26 take 7, that's going to be 19. 19 take 9 is going to be 10. And 10 take 10 is going to be 0. So that's the first one we can work out. Now let's go back and think about some floats. So here we go. 30 take 3, well that's 27. So we've got a float time there of three, might be minutes, for example. Uh, so the float time for activity L, 
uh, the is three minutes. That means the earliest I can start it is at 24. The latest I can start it is 27.